This giant machine is heading deep into the earth at Mount Bundy near Kakadu. Uh, the bottom of the decline is 200 metres vertically from the surface, which is over a kilometre of decline development currently. Mining engineer Dan Hennessy is driving us right to the bottom of Tom's Gully Mine. This labyrinth of dark and muddy tunnels doesn't look like much, but its walls are rich with hidden treasure. This is the face of Australia's new gold rush. There are no nuggets here, only seams of gold trapped with other compounds inside the rock. One tonne of ore will give us seven grams of gold, which might be about that size there. It's slow work. The miners use this machine worth more than a million dollars to drill holes in the rock face that are then packed with explosives. We charge those holes and fire them, uh, each time advancing three and a half metres. Huge bulldozers scoop tonnes of shattered rock into trucks, which haul it to the surface for processing. It's being able to get these massive machines right down to the face that makes this mine an attractive proposition. In Australia we use yeah, mostly large trucks and large underground loaders to move the ore. We require less people underground and in this current labour climate there's not a lot of people to go around. Each shift here has about 10 people. Um, in South Africa they have over a thousand people on a shift. Flooding caused the mine's former owners to shut down the operation last year, but GBS has upgraded this pumping station and is confident water won't be a problem anymore. We basically pump it direct to surface. So what that does is actually saves us having water flooding the mine down below. Each truckload of ore that's brought up to this stockpile contains about $8,000 worth of gold. And this is the mill where it will be extracted. We will start dry commissioning the crushing circuit this weekend. And basically we've been mining underground since February this year. And over the last two months we've brought roughly about 5,000 tonne of ore out. It's all part of a grand plan by GBS to rejuvenate the Territory's old gold mines. This is not an easy operation. If it was easy, somebody else would have been here. And what we are doing is uh, looking around the old, uh, old mining um, that had taken place up here. But more importantly, we've consolidated the ground. The ground that we've put together allows our geologists to cross boundaries and trace geological structures that might have not been done before. Um, mining tenement packages were held by, I don't know, 11, 12, 13 different mines up here at one side. Of course, the soaring gold price helps too. We've come up from around 250 US dollars, around 01, 02 to uh, so the current level is around 900, so the appreciation has been quite phenomenal and I think it's caught a lot of people by surprise. This is GBS's other main operation at Pine Creek. Union Reefs is a processing hub for three mines in the region. The ore is crushed and ground down to a powder, then treated with a cyanide solution and eventually turned into gold bars. On a monthly perspective, we, we are producing 12 to 12 and a half thousand ounces at the moment which in revenue terms is 12 to 12 and a half million dollars. It reopened in 2006, breathing new life into a mining town that had all but faded away. It's a region with a long mining history. Chinese prospectors were the pioneers of the first gold rush around Pine Creek in the late 1800s. We can't stake a claim to finding any gold up here. I think the Chinese are the only people that can stake a claim up here. Most of the gold that we're finding has been mined at one stage or another by the Chinese early miners. Modern gold mining has a dubious environmental record in the Territory. The previous owners of the Mount Todd gold mine near Catherine left a $30 million clean-up bill when they abandoned the site in 2000. Another mining company has agreed to pay for the rehabilitation work if it decides to reopen the mine. GBS has had to rehabilitate several of its sites and is adamant it will be upholding higher standards. We live here and at the end of the day we're going to be um, penalised if we don't manage to achieve what we say we're going to achieve, so we're quite comfortable with what we're doing here.
The environment lobby says it's commendable that resources companies are giving something back, but Green Groups say the government needs to spend more on fixing up the rest of the Territory's abandoned mining stock. There are hundreds of legacy mines in the Northern Territory, some very big, such as the, the disastrous Mount Todd, others much smaller. They all require work, and they require work very soon. GBS has invested millions in its Tom's Gully site, confident it won't be long before others cotton on to the Territory's golden potential. I think we have to prove that there are some substantial ore bodies here and I think we have to prove that we can extract the gold economically um, out of these uh, substantial ore bodies. But it could be the, the point of another movement of gold, if you like, up in the Northern Territory.